Hey everyone, it's Dominic, the Primetime Treasure Hunter. Welcome back to another video. You know, normally when you see me behind this wheel, I am going out to an estate sale, garage sale, rummage sale, flea market, or something like that to go sourcing. But this time, I'm going out to pick up a comic book collection. My absolute favorite number one thing to do. Now, a lot of people have written me and contacted me in my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. The link's down below in the description section if you'd like to come by and join. Also on this channel, a lot of people have asked me how to get into comic books and pick up an initial collection to get started. And this is a good example of something that I would go pick up. And I'll show you uh, some pictures of the advertisement that I looked at that drew me into this. And I'll just describe it to you briefly right now, but there were several pictures posted of comic books that were in large totes. Now she didn't show all the totes, she only showed part of like what looked like a crate actually, but she said they were huge totes filled with at least hundreds of comic books from the 70s and 80s. So that right there gets my attention when you hear 70s and 80s, because those are ones that normally have good value. Then she showed the characters Venom, she showed the Punisher, and she put some other titles in there that I know you could get a decent return in, on investment on if you could pick them up at somewhere around 15 cents a piece you could go up to 20 i like to start a little bit lower in my negotiations um it turns out uh, she put the ad around 12 o'clock last night on craigslist and i first saw it when i woke up early this morning to take my son to a basketball game that started at eight o'clock so i responded to it jumped on it immediately asked her if they were still available she said they were i asked how much she wanted for them which is another thing that was appealing to me from the ad she wasn't asking for some crazy price right at the outset and uh, she said they're still available. Uh, I, when I asked her how much she wanted for them, she said, I'm not sure, you know, you kind of tell me. I said, okay, well, let me know how many books you have. So she went, did a count, came back, told me she had um, a little bit over a thousand. So to me, it's a numbers game. Without being in there and seeing specific issues, uh, what I did is I offered her $125 because that's 12 and a half cents per book. It, it allows me to negotiate upwards a little bit if I need to. Um, but sometimes what happens in this situation is what's going to happen. She just said deal. And I said I could go pick it up right now. Uh, cash right now. So you need to be able to move fast in these situations before they sell it to somebody else. And so I'm getting ready to head over there right now. So I don't want to um, add too much time onto the interval because she's expecting me over there. So let's get over there right now. And then when we purchase the collection, I'll wind up showing you the stuff that's in there. It's going to be exciting because I don't know all what's in this 1000 uh, comic issues and hopefully there's some gems in there. So let's go take a look. Alright, so here we are. These are definitely big totes and there's definitely a thousand comics or more in here. I'm pretty happy with what I see in here. Uh, there's definitely some nice older issues uh, that I know will, um, you know, will I'll be able to resell. So uh, there's really cool old Submariner issue number 44. Um, Submariner 54. Uh, you know, this, this is good. Some good 15 cent issues here. Howard the Duck Annual, number one. You know, they're not all in perfect condition. They've got some issues, but, uh, you know, and there's newer things, too. Like, they're not all ones that are worth a ton of money, but overall, um, you know, not bad. So we'll go over, do a little uh, review later on, and uh, look in more depth in terms of what's here. Okay, so this is the processing stage, and this is where things will start to get challenging, especially for people who are new into this and people will start to get overwhelmed. But you basically need to bring everything in and you need to start organizing it. And you're never gonna be able to keep it organized in these totes. You can't even get to the bottom of it. So these are all stacked going downwards, but you need something that's gonna stack them going across. Actually, these here are going across, but you need them in a box that's designed to keep the comics in. And that's why you need to get something like this, which is called a long box. 
and this will fit about 400 comic books without boards on the back of them and about 275 with bags and boards. So when I say bags and boards, I mean one that's kind of like this here. You can see there's a backing board on the back of it and it's surrounded in plastic. But this one over here just has plastic. It has no board on the back of it, so that decreases the thickness. Some of these bags are gonna be old and you're gonna to wanna to change them out, so you need to have some current comic bags and you also need to have some Silver Age and possibly even some Golden Age if you have some really old comics. You'll need some tape handy to tape them together to tape the bags down uh, in the back. And then you're gonna start putting them in alphabetical order right here. So we'll just start with one box and then we'll move on to another one at some point. You don't necessarily expect to get this all done in one night. It could be a multi-night project, but you just start making dents in it each day. And if you see something in there that's particularly uh, old or you think might be worth something, then you could even just pull that out and start listing it. Uh, and definitely, if it's not protected enough, you wanna get better protection on it. Like, you know, these here have bags and boards on them, but like this board is just kind of janky at this point. So I just want to get another um, another bag on it. The bag is bad, so I want to get another bag on it. So just things like that. Um, that's about it for now. We're going to go through these. Uh, if I see anything that, uh, you know, I want to point out from time to time, I will uh, turn the camera back on and show you some specific things. All right, so some titles that I like to see are old Transformers. Those are always collectible. And another one that you definitely want to look out for is anything related to Venom, very popular. And this is the kind of thing that I mean, like you see this is Venom number one and it's in a bag and a board, which is good. But then this one's sitting around. Fortunately, it's still in great condition, but it has no bag and board. So I'm just gonna take it and put it inside this one. Now we're not gonna bag and board all of these because it would just take too long right now, but we're just going through ones that look like they'd be more valuable and uh, putting them in the bag and board here. The other thing I wanna point out to you, oh wow, Mrs. Primetime just passed me a really cool one right here. This is an old Knight Rider, uh, 25 cent issue, number four, it's super cool. But you know, if you don't know anything about comics at all, just do the math. So I bought over a thousand comic books for $125. If you do flea markets and you just set them up uh, for a buck a piece, you're gonna make a thousand dollars off a $125 purchase eventually. So, um, you know, it's just another thing to kind of consider. You could also set them up that way in garage sales, that sort of thing. All right, just gonna keep going through some more of these. All right, so I've got Knight Rider in a new bag and board. Looks really cool, nice and shiny and everything. Makes them really present much better when you have it in a proper bag and board. Now this one is from 1979. Knight Rider is one of the uh, Phantom Rider type of comic book characters. It is a ghost-like character. In fact, it actually used to be known as Ghost Rider. Uh, prior to the version of Ghost Rider that we all know today, uh, which is the ghost rider that has the skull and the flames and the leather jacket riding a motorcycle. So because of that, they actually wound up changing this one, which used to be known as Ghost Rider, and they changed his name. So here he's Knight Rider, has also been Phantom Rider, but uh, that's why. Now, over here, we have uh, The Thing, number one, and this one is actually fairly common. Uh, this is where people who are new into comics could get confused. They'll find a number one issue like this with The Thing on it, and you know it says 60 cents, and they think they have something that's worth a fortune. It's not worth a fortune. It's fairly common, actually. This one's worth about 10 to $12, which you know isn't bad, though, if you're getting them for 12 cents a piece. So, um, but just keep that in mind, you know, some things are not quite worth as, as much as you might think they are. You really need to dive into this area and get familiar with the different titles and, uh, um, you know, how many are still around and that's going to affect the uh, value combined with a lot of other things like condition and stuff. But uh, there's a lot to learn in this area. This is another reason I love getting these old comic book collections because you never know what you're gonna find in here. So this is for all the wrestling fans out there, maybe vintage flippers watching this. The Big Boss Man, oh my gosh, I remember him. 
Uh, he used to crack me up and just, you know, just going through these old WWF magazines are funny. Uh, there we got Ultimate Warrior, Hulk Hogan inside. So, uh, you know, people buy these. Um, you know, this is 1990, so it's not super old, but it will have some nostalgia for someone. And so I, I generally sell these in like little lots that I put together, but it cracks me up to see the big boss man here. Okay, here's a few more older ones I figured I'd show you. Um, Captain America and Falcon. It, it's really not worth that much, uh, but it's still cool whenever you could get these old superhero books, you lot them together, you could sell them. Uh, so, you know, there's an early Avengers here for 25 cents, which is nice with a really cool t um, uh, cover here. I really love the art on that. And, um, you know, we've got some Captain Marvel and we've got some Battlestar Galactica. And you can see here, there's a couple of them. Uh, in fact, there's three, so there's five and six, which is which is nice when you could start to see consecutive issues. It makes it easier to to lot them together rather than if you had just had five, you know, ten and twenty one. That's a little harder. But if you get some consecutive runs together, and and keep in mind when you buy these collections that you'll have one box where you have issue five and six, and then it might not be until the third box where you see seven, eight, and nine will all of a sudden appear. So. Just keep that in mind. Just because you don't initially see it doesn't mean it's not there. Hey, Daisy. Hey, you helping out with the comics today? You got up out of your little sleep? All right. So we got Daisy helping out here too. And um, all right, we're going to keep going. All right, well, Mrs. Primetime is really pulling out some good comic books over there. This is nice. Um, one thing you like to see are horror-related comic books, especially anyone where there's a woman uh, who looks scared in the in the uh, um, on the cover. Those are very collectible uh, for people. So um, a lot of guys like picking up things like that, you know, especially with some big powerful character that's standing there, like the mummy or Dracula or like a werewolf or something. So this one's from 1974, 25 cent issue. Um, really cool supernatural thriller. So I'm happy about that one. Uh, then we got a nice old uh, Nick Fury, Agents of Shield. Uh, so that's really cool to have that in there. Um, and then, you know, you're going to get things like this. You're going to get damaged ones. Uh, so you see this, it has like a rip on the bottom, which, you know, it doesn't really bother me too much. Uh, this is a, a newer modern uh, book, but just keep that in mind. You know, whenever anyone tells you, oh, they're all in perfect condition, which is what this person told me who had no clue. Uh, I always tell them there's no such thing really as a comic book collection that is all in perfect condition. Sorry, I had to move over and get Daisy. Um, so it, it just doesn't happen usually, unless you're just buying from someone who kept everything perfect, but that's rare. So especially when you buy a lot like this, when everything is in totes, um, you're gonna get things that are damaged. And um, you know, there's the things you could do to repurpose them. I've talked about that in other videos. So we're not gonna throw it in the trash, but we're gonna see if we could do things to uh, creatively reuse it. Okay, so we've got some old Iron Man, which is nice. Um, but one of the things I also wanted to point out to you, some more Iron Man, is Marvel Age. Because this one always trips people up who are new. Because what happens is they see this old price on it of 35 cents or sometimes 25 cents or even 50 cents. And they think that now they found something super old. But what they don't know is that the reason why that low price is on it is because this was just a promotional comic book. Marvel was just promoting their other comics through here. So it was basically like an advertising book practically um, where they were just advertising things related to their brand inside. Now they're cool comics, don't get me wrong, but there's so many of them out there that they're really not worth a lot unless you had issue one or Look for issue 41 with Stan Lee on the cover. Now that he passed away, that book is worth around $80 if it's in near mint condition. If you had it signed by him and graded, it would be worth about $2,000. So uh, that's just how crazy things are in the comic universe. All right, now you always want to find Spider-Man in a comic book collection, always. Spider-Man is always worth a lot of money. If you take a comic book collection to a comic book shop, what they're going to do is they're going to pick out every single Spider-Man issue and they're going to charge more in terms of uh, customers who are going in to buy loose comics compared to the other comics that are generally in the box. So Spider-Man, always, always look out for it. 
There's different Spider-Man titles. Amazing Spider-Man is the top one that you want to find. Those are generally worth much more than the others. This is Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man, which later became known as Spectacular Spider-Man. That would be the second uh, title that you'd want to find. I'd say third would be Web of Spider-Man in terms of the vintage titles. And then lastly would be Marvel Tales. And that's because Marvel Tales, even though I love Marvel Tales, they're all reprints of older Amazing Spider-Man comic books. So just keep that in mind. All right, this one is pretty cool. This is from the early to mid-1970s. Um, it is a spoof, a comedic spoof off of the first issue of Tomb of Dracula. So it's not a comic that's meant to be taken seriously. It's a parody type book. It's in uh, great condition, actually. In its current state, it's probably worth somewhere around $20, $25. So uh, just as a single issue. Of uh, this one here... Uh, Superman's girlfriend Lois Lane is really cool you know it's an early issue 1936 it's from 1962 you know it's got some damage to it you could see there's some damage on the spine and up top here uh, the back also has some damage and some staining on it uh, but you know it's reasonable you could uh, get around 20 bucks for this maybe a little bit less uh, but, you know, not bad for a single book when you consider, again, that you're getting them for around 12 cents. Uh, we've got some old Miss Marvel here. We've got uh, Masters of Kung Fu. And if you ever see the bigger Masters of Kung Fu um, magazines uh, or it's uh, Hands of uh, Shang-Chi, um, there's some that have Bruce Lee on the cover. If you ever see those, those generally are worth a lot more money. Another thing I want to point out here is that you have a marking here which is from what's called a laundry pen these markings are very common uh, back in the day the comic book owners used to mark them up like this and believe it or not these laundry pen marks do not take the value off all that much um, some people actually think they're kind of pretty cool to be on there because it has kind of a vintage look to it so you know it depends on the buyer some will uh, not mind this being on there some will will not want it on there but uh, it's not something that should make you toss the comic book out if you see that on there. All right, this is something that trips people up all the time who are new. They come across something like this. Like, remember I said, look for Amazing Spider-Man, and they find this, and it says 12 cents on it, and now they think they found the book that's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, Amazing Spider-Man number 41. Wow, look what I just found. Well, in reality, all you found was a reproduction of the book. And key giveaways to that are the original Amazing Spider-Man never had a black rim around the comic book like that. That never happened. So that's a giveaway right there. The other giveaway is when you open it up inside, the original Amazing Spider-Mans never had um, colors that are quite that bright. Like that, that just not you're just not going to see that in old Amazing Spider-Man comic books. And... Another thing that gets people tripped up about it is when they open the book, they don't see a date. So they think, wow, you know, this really must be old. It must be from the 60s. And you actually have to turn several pages in until you can actually find the date on it in terms of, uh, you know, when it was actually published. And you see it's right there. And you zoom in and there you can see it's from 2001. So uh, again, this is this is there's you know there's a big learning curve to comic books if you're just getting into it new. So I'm trying to pass on a little tips to you here along the way. Okay, two other titles to know. I showed them earlier on the top, but just to reiterate, Sergeant Rock, a great old uh, military war title, very very popular. A lot of people like this. This is an old issue right here, uh, twelve cents from 1969. Uh, also, a Submariner, very popular as well. Uh, that's Prince Namor down there. And you see anything with him on it, uh, you know, pick it up because um, there's a lot of collectors for these vintage covers out there. Absolutely super cool to display. Okay, well, Marvel Age 41 with just Stan Lee on the cover has not turned up yet. Of course, number 40 has a number 43, but not 41 yet. Mrs. Primetime, I got to give it to her. She has got a good eye. She's like, hey, how about this one? And uh, that is Stan Lee right there. Um, to his right is Jim Shooter. 
uh, both very important people in the history of comic books in terms of developing them and editing them, that sort of thing. Um, this one here, it looks to be in pretty good shape. Max value on it would be around $20, $25 um, ungraded like this. So um, happy about this one. It's a nice one to see. And also some old Wonder Woman is starting to uh, to creep up here. So uh, we'll see how, uh, how many of these um, make their appearance. So it's nice to see some uh, old Wonder Woman representing the ladies in here. So move on, see what else we got. Hey, and for all my He-Man Masters of the Universe fans out there, just figured I'd show you this. Marvel Age, He-Man, Masters of the Universe. Pretty cool. Okay, another tip for people who are new. Sometimes you're going to find comic books that have these boards on the back of them. Basically, what DC did and Marvel did sometimes too is they sold a lot of their overstock in these little three packs and they tried to make them collectible they put um you know free trading cards inside so this one has eight free trading cards do not remove these from the pack keep them in there that's what does make them collectible they're not worth a ton because these for example right here are from the 90s but still you definitely want to keep these in the pack and uh that will help it um maintain value over time and one day you know if you want to hold on to it this would be worth a lot more than it is now which i don't know this exact one but i've had ones like this before that are worth like 10 12 bucks something like that but um you know hold on to one like this when they're in the actual container see here's another one what i'm talking about this one was done through marvel and you know people remember getting them like this when they were kids. They remember grabbing them off the rack and that's the main reason why these things hold some value. I wouldn't even pull this sticker off. Like right here, this says a dollar. Cause again, that's that's the nostalgia that someone remembers when they pull that off and uh, they, you know, they got this comic. Now, individually, you know, like this comic here, is it worth anything? No, but again, if you have it in here, that could add some value to it. So keep it in there, don't pull these out. All right, we got some old Daredevil popping up, so that's cool. Um, I love these covers, these old horror covers, you know, Creatures on the Loose. Now, some Creatures on the Loose issues can be worth a lot. Uh, this particular one isn't. Uh, it's worth less than $10. Same with this one here. Oh, this really just happened. Mrs. Primetime, this was not planned, I swear to God. Mrs. Primetime just pulled this out. This is awesome. This is the issue I was looking for. Marvel Age number 41. I can't believe she seriously just pulled this out. That is so awesome. I am so pumped up. This is really cool. And she also just pulled out. I wish she would go on camera. But anyway, this is issue three and issue four. So really cool. Nice lot we could put together. But I'd pull this one out and sell this separately. I love this. Um... You know, this will just make a nice dent in terms of what I paid for the whole collection. So this is really, really uh, a sought after comic book. So happy to have this. But anyway, going back to here, uh, I want to also point out this comic company here, Charlton. Um, they are basically an independent comic company separate from Marvel and DC, which are the two main ones. It's an older comic book company. Some of their stuff is worth a lot. This particular one isn't. So even though it's horror related, even though it's old, it's another one of those issues that's worth less than uh, 10 bucks. So, you know, I would add it together with a lot of um, other horror books and try and sell them that way. So try to theme them up. Here we've got a nice old military one, GI Combat, 12 cent issue. So, um, you know, excited, a lot of cool things just kind of adding up here. And you could just kind of be creative in terms of how you want to combine them. You know, you could just create, diff you could combine different military titles together. If you don't have another GI Combat, that's okay. You know, just combine it with something else that's old and military. And, you know, that's how things like this sell. Okay, now this is a great example of why you have to process these collections when they come in because this one here, you can see there it has a bend to it. And the bend primarily comes from the cardboard, even though it looks like 
you know, right up front here, that it's the comic that's mostly bent. It's really actually the board that's the problem. It's just kind of warped over time. There's lots of reasons why that could happen, but what, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this out of here and we're gonna put, you can see here, the board is really the is really the problem. It's not so much the book, but the book can get bent because of that, and we wanna straighten it out. And the way to straighten it out is we're just gonna take that out there. Okay. And we have a nice fresh bag and board that's nice and straight. We're gonna put it right inside there. Okay, so now we have it in a new bag and board, and you can see here it looks nice and straight. And we're gonna make sure that some pressure is applied to it to make it stay straight. And the way you do that is you just put it right in order here. Like you can see, there's our other Knight Rider number four. So we're just gonna slip it right in front of it here. And as we press this in, because these are all in alphabetical order, once this is filled up, which, you know, that will definitely be filled up later, that pressure against it just over time just makes it nice and straight. So that's, again, one of the reasons why you want to do this early processing of the comics. Now, one of the things you're always happy to see, and this is one of the things that I saw in the comic ad that uh, was appealing to me, is Venom. Anytime you see Venom, which is this black character here with the long tongue, he is super, super collectible. So you can make lots of uh, anything with Venom in it and it will sell. And here you can see like we have issues two, we have issues three. Here you go again, two and three and four. Even mixed lots. So even if you don't have the whole uh, series or the whole set, like this is a popular one here, Venom Lethal Protector number one. So we put that back there. In fact, we have a second one of them here. Um, there's issue two, uh, Venom vs. Wolverine. I mean, just really, really cool stuff. I love it. So having all this is great. Um, I'm also seeing some other older books like The Defenders. That's a great one. Uh, so it's just, we just keep uncovering all sorts of stuff here. Um, you know, things are kind of spread out. We still got this tote we haven't got to yet, but uh, there's just lots of stacks all over the place. Things are getting organized. These are all in alphabetical order at this point, and we just keep working at it. All right, well, we just continue to find some cool stuff. Uh, this is an old Incredible Hulk. Unfortunately, it has some damage to the top cover. It's going to take some of the value down, but it's still a nice, cool, old uh, cover of the Hulk. Um, we've got some old Tarzan in here. Now, Tarzan's very hard to move uh, if you have individual issues, but if you have uh, consecutive issues or close to consecutive issues uh, and you have a small little lot of older Tarzan books like you see here, that can help you move them. So that's what I would do here is I would bundle these together and I would just sell them that way. I mean, there, there's some really cool covers here. And uh, worst case scenario, if they didn't sell, I'd read them myself because I love these old uh, Tarzan jungle books. I think they're pretty cool. Another thing that you probably saw earlier, let me just get this, this is a more modern Iron Man out of the way, is Howard the Duck. I always sell Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck does move. Now this particular one's not worth a ton, the Howard the Duck annual, but let me show you something really neat. A lot of people do not know this, but believe it or not, in Howard the Duck number 13, if you open it up to the first page, this is the first full appearance of Kiss in a comic book. Ungraded, so like not in a slab, not officially graded, if it's in great condition. The max value on this um, would be around 47, maybe 50 bucks. Um, most likely will go less than that, so somewhere in the 40s or 30s. But um, you know, still, really cool book, guaranteed seller because of this. Every time this is gonna sell. Okay, so we've got some old issues of Thor here. Here is issue 250 and 251, which I will add to some of the more modern issues of Thor that are here. So there are newer things here in addition to old things. I will tell you, if you see anything here you like and you would like to purchase it, all you have to do is contact me. Um, I'm available at primetimetreasure at gmail.com or 
Or if you're in my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center, you could contact me through Facebook Messenger. The link to my Facebook group is down below in the description section, so make sure you go check that out. And um, I could just uh, make a deal with you on the side and sell stuff to you from here. So we don't even have to go through eBay. Uh, we'll just do it right to PayPal. So just let me know if you see anything you like. Sometimes you find these weird comic books that um, <laughs> it's just very strange. Like this one here, Reagan's Raiders. It's Ronald Reagan dressed up in a superhero outfit with a machine gun. Absolutely bizarre. Um, not really worth anything uh, unless you're a big Ronald Reagan fan and you just have to have this. So uh, just thought I'd show it to you. All right, so this is another great example of how an old comic book does not necessarily mean a valuable comic book. So this is Superboy. It's a 12 cent issue. It is definitely old. However, it's just not worth a lot of money. Um, it's just kind of like a random issue, number 152. Nothing real important that happened in it. Superboy is not as popular as Superman. And so this book is worth you know maximum would be like 15 bucks and probably less because it's got some damage on it and stuff so just not worth a lot yet you know you could get a more modern book like this which we found in there ralph snart and if you had a small lot of these together um you could sell them for a lot more than you'd sell the Superboy. that's for sure um a lot of people uh, are nostalgic for ralph snart actually uh because they grew up with him like i did in the 80s and uh there he is and they remember these just odd bizarre uh, comics growing up and so this company now does not exist which is ironic given the name of it anytime I see these Ralph Snarts I, I always pick them up and hold on to them all right one last uh, little pointer here for tonight uh, this is an old X-Men comic and you can see here there's a date stamped on it it's called a date stamp that is another thing that does actually not take a lot of value away from the comic because this was common to do back in the day. Now, if you did it now, it's a different issue. But because this is what people did back in the day is put these date stamps on it, um, it, it just doesn't take away a lot from the value. Some people actually don't mind it being on there at all. They think it adds like a nice vintage quality to it. So just wanted to pass that on to you. Um, I'm going to start wrapping up here because it is a little bit past midnight and I have a lot of stuff left to do. I've got some orders after the process. This is uh, what I was able to get through so far. All of this is in alphabetical order, so it will be easier to sort through over time when I'm looking for stuff. I want a list. These are things that Mrs. Primetime helped me put in stacks and they're alphabetized stacks. So I'm going to toss these back in the tote uh, that clear one over there and we'll just put it in another one of these boxes tomorrow and go through this big tote tomorrow we haven't even gone through that one yet so what i need you to let me know is as follows i'll tell you in just a second as i turn this camera around all right everyone that is a wrap i am just chilling out right here and um you know let me know if you want me to do a follow-up video where i show you what is in that blue tote. I'm gonna leave that up to you. Um, you know, a lot of people are telling me they wanna learn more about comics, so I figured this would be a cool way to do it. This is something that Mrs. Primetime and I do a lot in terms of going over these collections when they come in. And I figured for the first time, I would turn the camera on at different points to just show you, uh, you know, different pointers along the way, just things to learn. I think people who are new into comics could benefit from this and also people who are experienced in comics will just get a kick out of seeing some of the types of comics that are in the collection. I know I always like looking through comic book haul videos like this. They're fun. So again, if you saw anything that you like, just reach out to me and let me know and uh, I'll be happy to uh, sell it to you on the side. Um, these are for things that I have not listed on eBay yet. If it's something that's already on eBay... You, you could go to my eBay store, by the way, at the link down uh, below in the description section. Also, it's just easy to look up. It's the Primetime Treasure eBay store. I don't have the word hunter in the uh, eBay store. So that's about it. I'm going to wrap up this video. If you liked it, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. 
and um, come by the Facebook group and my Instagram account at prime underscore time underscore treasure. I do comic book be on the lookout items there from time to time where I'll go over a particular comic title or a specific comic book issue, tell you why it's important. I do that for about a minute. There's still some on there, so you could go and look uh, at prior videos that I did on Instagram and um, you know find out some more about comic books that way. So hope you enjoyed it. See you all at the next video, everyone. Take care.